Welcome to another video. If you ever get a problem that has the integral of a natural log function, you should think u substitution or integration by parts. Now, if the natural log function is just there alone, there's nothing else beside it, forget about u substitution <laughs> because you always require in u substitution that the derivative of whatever you have in the natural log function will be multiplying the natural log function or at least a, mul a scalar multiple of it or a form of it. But right now, what we have is a natural log function that has an argument, but there's nothing else multiplying it. So the only option we have, well, I can't say the only option. The most common option we have is integration by parts. And what that means is we have to choose, there are just two things under the integral side, the natural log function and dx. So one of them will be your u and the other one will be dv. So we know we're supposed to do this. We know that what we have is u dv. That's the problem we have. And our answer is going to be uv minus the integral of v times du. So what should we pick? as are you, pick what you don't know how to integrate, and that's the natural log function. So we're gonna pick this as our u, and we're gonna say dx is dv, and we're gonna find u and v by doing our little stuff, and we're gonna find du also, and we'll be able to compute our answer. Let's get into the video. So like we agreed, we're going to take u to be the natural log function that's sitting here. So we say let u be equal to um, ln of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. So now we need to find du. Now this is where the work is, because if you want to differentiate this, now I've said this every time. I do the derivative of the natural log function. The fastest way to it is the derivative of what you see inside divided by what you see. So at the end of the day, if we're going to say u prime is going to be the derivative of this divided by what we have, x plus, that's how I, how I like to write it. Or I can say 1 over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of what's in here. So how do we get that derivative? It's easy. What's the derivative of x? It's 1. Plus, what is the derivative of x squared minus 1 under the square root sign? This is another trick you want to memorize or master as a calculus student. Whenever you take the derivative of any square root function, that square root function is going to appear this way. 2 multiplied by the square root function x squared minus 1. You see that? And what's going to be on top of that fraction? It's going to be the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x. So I have taken the derivative of the natural log function. The derivative of what is inside over what is inside. Now what's the derivative of what's inside? It's 1 plus the derivative of this. And the derivative of this is the derivative of what's inside over 2 times the square root function itself. So, let's simplify this. If you simplify this, oh, you see that this 2 will cancel this 2. So, we can get rid of these two 2's. And now we can make this into a single rational expression. Multiply this by square root of x squared minus 1. So, we're going to end up with 1 over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 multiplied by, if we simplify this, what do we get? Square root of x squared minus 1 plus x over square root of x squared minus 1. As you can see, this is exactly what is here. So if we cancel these two out, our answer is just 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. So we can go here comfortably and say du 
is 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. So what do we need? Well, we found u and du. Now we need dv and v. Remember we said if this is our u, then this is our dv. So we say dv equals dx, which implies if you integrate both sides, v is equal to x. And we're done. We just need to apply the formula and get what we have to do. So let's apply the formula. We have the integral of u dv is u times v minus the integral of v du. So what is u times v? So we know that, I, okay, let's write here that we got i to be our integral. That's what we're looking for. So the integral we're looking for is u times v. u times v is this times this. So that's going to be x times ln of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Minus the integral of v du. What is v again? x. What is du? This guy. So it's going to be this times this, which is going to be x over this. Integral of x over the square root of x squared minus 1 dx. Now, don't be tempted to start thinking, oh, I'm going to do a trig substitution. Don't do it. That, that's not smart because you can see a clear u substitution here. The derivative of what is under the square root sign is what's sitting on top. So u substitution is your friend. Okay, so let's do this. Let, um, let's do it here. Okay, so u substitution, let's just say u sub. I've already used u, so let's call it t sub. Okay, t sub. We're going to say um, let t be equal to x squared minus 1. That's how I like to do it. Some people will like to take everything, but I just leave it like that. So my life is easy. So I know that dt is going to be 2x dx. So half of dt equals x dx. And I can see x dx right there. So I'm going to replace x dx with half of dt. Let's call this, let's give it a name. Let's call it i, little i. Okay, so we're going to say that our little i is equal to the integral of, instead of x dx, I'm going to say 1 half dt. And under now, I have the square root of t. So I'm going to write it as the square root of t. Okay, but we know if we simplify this, we can move the 1 half to the back. It's 1 half of the integral of t to the one half, sorry, negative one half dt, because it was in the bottom before. So do we know how to integrate this? Yes. So what we have is one half multiplied by, if you integrate t to the negative one half, you add one half to it, you add one to it, you get one half. Then you divide by one half, which is the same thing as multiplying by two. And then you have t to the one half. Okay, now should I do plus C? Don't worry, we're still going to get a giant C when we're done. So leave all the little C's alone. So what do you have here? You're going to have the square root of T. No way. That's it. So we've gotten this. We're going to go back and resubstitute what T was. T was X squared minus 1, which implies that the little i is equal to the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, so we can now say the giant i, the original problem we had, is equal to x ln of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 minus the little i, which is the square root of x squared minus 1. C. Nice. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living.
Bye-bye.